14th Dalai Lama, there is a lot of concern that you may be the last Dalai Lama. Do you think that you will? That is no problem. That's not a problem. The name institution, Dalai Lama, now there's up to 20 people. As early as 69, I made clear publicly, officially, uh, the very institution of Dalai Lama should continue or not up to 20 people. So I don't care. For a man of peace, the 14th Dalai Lama has been unable to avoid a life of controversy. In 1937, he was just two years old when monks believed he was their reincarnated leader. The world was changing around the young boy. By 1959, communist China had tightened its grip on Tibet. The Dalai Lama fled for his life to India and remains in exile today. His Holiness is fully aware China will install its own Dalai Lama, so there could be two but only one that carries on the Tibetan tradition. In order for that to continue, the Dalai Lama may choose to be reincarnated outside of Tibet, and that's not all that could change. The 15th Dalai Lama could even be a female. In case people want to keep this institution, and also their successor, also said people want to follow traditional way, then the uh, search one, uh, one boy or one, 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 one child. But that also there's a different circumstances. If the people want to see female, then that also is possible. And anyway, if the circumstances still remain like this, we are outside Tibet. Uh, uh, and then the reincarnation of Dalai Lama logically find in free country, why the very purpose of the reincarnation is to carry continuously the task which started previous life. Mm -hmm. So uh, I come uh, in free in a free country. Uh, I escape to free country to certain purpose. So till that purpose not fulfilled, not achieved, then the reincarnation must be, true reincarnation must be, who, who carry continuously that task not yet established, not yet achieved, so accomplished. it like will that. continue? Yes. There are millions all over the world who admire you. They adhere to your teachings. Who do you look up to? Where hmm? do you get your inspiration? Perhaps, uh, firstly, my mother. Yeah. <laughs> when I was very young, mm -hmm. uh, my mother provides maximum affection. Uh, then, of course, I think generally the Tibetan community, like any other major religion, Buddhism also is very much emphasis importance of compassion and forgiveness. Then, then of course, the, when I met with people, you see people smiling, so that also the source of inspiration. Your Holiness, as you travel around the U.S. and to colleges like Nova Southeastern University. What's your main message to Americans? Of course, everybody is one happy life. Uh, uh, you, sometimes you see people, you see, in order to achieve the happy life, uh, successful life, entirely relying on external means, mm -hmm. money, power, or some other things. I think that is a mistake. Uh, ultimately, the source of happiness or joyfulness is very much within ourselves. And once our mind more calm, more joyful, then our handle, our sort of activities also can be more effective because it can be more realistic. Many have lost their jobs, they've lost their homes. There's a lot of worry in them. So how do you find that peace, that happiness, when you have all of this to deal with? The internal value, there's no limitation. If you make effort, it is development continuously and very stable. The material value, even someone who's own whole world, uh, maybe still discontentment, discontent. Right. <laughs> so there is a limitation in any case. So I think America 
perhaps I think you take for granted all your sort of better facility. So then all the certainty something happened, then too much disturbances. And I think the American people, of course the richest country, so sometimes maybe your lifestyle, maybe a little too much luxury sort of life. You call yourself a simple Buddhist monk. Yes. Many people think of you much more than that. But if you weren't a monk, what would you be? Just ordinary human being. Really? I a simple Buddhist monk, also ordinary human being. What does the Dalai Lama do in his spare time? Do you watch TV? Do you watch the news? People want to know yeah, what is it like to be you? Meditation. Meditation and reading, study. Your Holiness, let me ask you this. Do you think you will ever go back to a free Tibet? Oh yes, certain. We, everybody, all Tibetan, we believe that things will change. So, uh, so there is, we always hope there is a return. In this lifetime, do you think you will? Oh yes, certainly, certainly. You turn but 75 that's our hope. this summer, in this oh. lifetime. This is our hope. Betty Wing, CNN, Plantation, Florida.